looks a lot like the mark of the Father in, in a lot of different ways, but it's quite opposite <laughs> of the mark mm-hmm. of the Creator. And, and so I want to discuss that a little bit. So give us, give us uh, the, uh, the, the dagger here, what this, this mark of the beast. Do we all need, I mean, that, that 666 image I showed you earlier, you know, I mean, what, what does that mean? What, how, do we, how do we wrestle with that? Well, 666 has been the matter of speculation, especially within your um, numerology community, because we get these mystical influences from Kabbalism and we say, well, you know, let's dissect the number and, you know, oh, Prince Charles of Wales, you know, I can apply some, you know, form of gematria to his name and it comes out to equal 666. And he's just like, you know, dude, I'm I'm just, you know, kind of trying to chill out here and, you know, live high. I, I'm not ruling anybody. I, I'm not trying to take over the world. You know, leave me alone. Leave me out of this. Um, and, you know. See, nobody, nobody told me that. I need, uh, So I need to probably throw away all of my Prince Charles memorabilia. Oh, and Recep Erdogan uh, in <laughs> Turkey also. You know, his, his name, uh, if you apply a certain gematria to it, it comes up to 6662. So there are people that, you know, have their Google News alerts set to, you know, Recep uh, uh, Erdogan and, you know, they're waiting for him to do, you know, something else. <laughs> but, you know, what we actually get to this name and this number, we know it was the replacement for the Shema, which is, you know, our creator's name is one. We know this came out of Rome. So let's just look at the symbol that they gave us. They gave us Jesus, who is a trinity. And what is 666? You know, well, I mean, there are people that dig in. Oh, no, it's it's not the number 666. It's actually three Greek letters. Well, you know, those three Greek letters you know, also represent a number. So even though we want to try to get into, you know, oh, well, it's the symbol of Christology in the New Testament church and there's of theories about this. But when you really look at this number, it is simply a trinity. It is 666. So what we're really looking at here is, you know, it, it doesn't say that this is the number of the devil. It doesn't say that this is even the number of the beast. It says this is the number of a man. So, you know, where who invented this trinity? Well, you know, this whole doctrine is the doctrine of man. And, you know, if we get, you know, a little bit deeper into Revelation chapter 13, we're going to see that this beast has created an image and made the world to bow down before an image. Well, if I say the name Jesus H. Christ, instantly he pops into your head. You can see him there. He's got his, he's got his beard. He's got his baby blue eyes. He's about 98 pounds. He's got... You know, oh, yes, he's making a cross symbol with his fingers. Um, he's got the sun behind his head, like all sun gods do. Uh, whether you're talking about Buddha or Krishna, all of your sun gods always have the sun behind their head. And, you know, half of the images, the older images of Jesus, you also see he's got the sun around his neck. So we're looking at a sun god. And this is not a man. There was never a man named Jesus H. Christ. Um, the, the doctrine and teaching that surrounds their image is completely different from the Messiah we actually read about in the Bible. Jesus came to start a new religion. He came to start a church. Uh, he came to abolish the law of Moses. This is not a man who ever lived. Rather, this is an image, a carbon copy of a man who actually lived. So Jesus Christ, the reason he appears in your head, even though you know you've never seen him, nobody had a Polaroid back then, you have not seen what Messiah looked like. You don't know what he looked like. But when I say the name Jesus, instantly the image pops into your head. And that's the image that Rome has made the world to bow down to. Wow. And so, I mean, and, and I, I 100% agree with that. Those who listen to the morning show often will know that. We talk about that frequently. Um, the, the Jesus, Greco-Roman Jesus character of the church is, in fact, what you could call the false Messiah, or the uh, you could even use the word, the Christian word, antichrist, if you wanted. Uh, it's almost like... Which, he's, yeah, <laughs> it means false Messiah. And, you know, yeah. the real Messiah even said... I'm come in my father's name, yeah. Yahshua, or yeah. Yah save. 
Mm -hmm. I'm coming in my Father's name, but you guys won't receive me. But if another, another what? Another Messiah, perhaps. If another will come in his own name, hmm. him you will receive. And that's, if I'm not mistaken, John 5, 43 or somewhere roundabouts. Which, but, man, that's crazy. That is, <laughs> if, if another comes in his own name, you'll re think, I mean, I hope that you guys watching and listening will will understand the depth of that short little verse that he just mentioned. I mean, you don't receive me, I come in my Father's name, but you'll receive another who comes in his own name. We, we've done shows on Jesus. We've done, you know, and, and again, Paul, we've talked about this. There's a lot of ideas about Jesus out there, and it's it's Hail Zeus, and obviously, and it's it's a lot of those things are completely, absolutely wrong. Correct. <laughs> There's a lot of conspiracies around the name Jesus. Let's just say that. But well, pseudo-archaeology. Yeah. yeah. The truth of the matter is this. The Messiah of the scriptures was not named Jesus. He never heard the name Jesus. No one who knew him heard the name Jesus. The, the letter J wasn't ever around anywhere remotely close to them <laughs> living, walking on the planet. You know, this this name Jesus, I mean, if, if, if he came back and you called him Jesus, he'd be like, what? What? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's like we call him Paul Richard or, you know, uh, maybe I should start calling you Richard. I don't know. Uh, but it's well, like here they pronounce it Jesus. <laughs> and if you had walked up to Messiah and said Jesus, you would be basically saying, you know, he would probably look at you and say, where? I don't see it. Because <laughs> what you're actually telling him in Hebrew is basically there's a horse over here. Yep. Yep. And, exactly. you know, we know that our Messiah didn't have anything to do with horses. His name wasn't, you know, here is a horse. Uh, so I think we can pretty easily discredit that as his actual name, not in. Hebrew, not in Aramaic, um, not even in Koine. So <laughs> some some boast in chariots, some boast in horses, but we'll boast in the name of Yehovah our Elohim, right? So it, it, this is something that is very important. We need to understand. But so so now we've we've got the we've got the Jesus guy pulled into the conversation here. Um, mm -hmm. So so now now we've got an issue on our hands because because. Because there, there are a lot of people out there who, uh, as you said, worship Jesus. And to, to be clear about one point, you know, this isn't a sacred namers debate. It's not saying, well, if you call him Jesus, you know, that's the mark of the beast and you're lost. Um, remember, this has to do with worship, not pronunciation, not archaeology. So if you call him Jesus, but you actually, you know, know and identify with the Messiah in the Bible who came to, you know, call uh, a wayward people back to obedience to his father, uh, the law of Moses. If you actually understand who the creator is and that's the one you bow down to and you know that he is one, not three, then, you know, perhaps all is not lost. But I think the main reason that we're both, you know, painting the name Jesus in a bad light is really just to distinguish between the, the Messiah of the Bible and the image of a man that Rome gave us 1,700 years ago. Yeah, so, you know, exactly. just, just for clarity's sake, we're going to let Rome keep the name that we all know they invented. We're going to let them hang on to Jesus. And, you know, when we're talking about the Messiah of the Bible, we'll call him Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahusha, what, whatever, you know, school of thought has persuaded you the best. Um, I don't think it really matters so much. I don't recall anyone in the Bible ever being judged on their pronunciation. But, well, which is good, because if you actually get into um, some of the uh, older uh, codices of the Bible, um, some of these scribes were terrible, terrible writers. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, he wasn't, he's not grading us on spelling and pronunciation. Yeah. If so, we've got a whole Bible full of lost folk. <laughs> I think, you know, I think it's important to remember here that, that the yeah, Jesus, you know, is a different name. And that's the reason we, we are talking about it this way. It's not, you know, Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahushua, Yehoshua, those are all the same name. That, that's the same name. Correct. That's a different pronunciation. There's all different pronunciations. But we're talking about Jesus, the Roman character created to deceive, really, the world. That's a different name. And, and as Paul said, he came in his, it's his own name, right? Well, the, mm -hmm. the image of a man, right? You, if you do some research 
on Constantine, uh, you know, he, he was setting up statues of himself everywhere, right? I mean, he, he was, he was the Messiah. <laughs> I mean, this, you know, that's the way I've, I've, as I've studied, I've come to the conclusion that Constantine, he's, that's Jesus. I mean, and, and it, it kind of gets passed down. And now we have this picture of the Pope that, that we use all the time for our picture of Jesus. But, but really we've talked about it with Doug, who, who has a show here crossing over on OCMR Live. And Jesus really is you. It's really your, it's, it's yourself. It's like this, this fabricated image of man basically tells you you can do whatever you want to do. We talked about which the is the oldest lie in the book. That's exactly. called humanism. Exactly. And now what we can do is we can now we worship ourselves. We are our own god. We are the one that tells us what to do. We are the ones we bow down to. We just it's about me, you know? Uh, so so we we've got we've got Jesus pulled in here. So now we're we're talking about this mark and uh, the mark of the beast and and I think it's pretty clear that it's not it's not a uh, uh it's not a chip. It's not a, you know, I've got a credit card in my wallet that has a chip on it. And, uh, you know, it's like, how do, how do I, you know, I, I, I use it. What's funny is if you have, if you don't have the chip, you won't be able to buy or sell. I wouldn't right? hold your credit card I'm not, I'm not going to, to. I'm not going to. I'm just saying <laughs> if, if you don't have a chip, you wouldn't be able to buy or sell. Right. Uh, so, so obviously it must be, that the, must chip, be it. Must be the chip on the credit card. Correct. Uh, but if because, we would also look to history, we would find times and places in Europe where unless you were a Christian, uh, you were not allowed to own property, you were not allowed to, you know, own a business and things like that. So, you know, again, that's something that we're looking into the future and trying to find a, a coming interpretation of that. And in reality, all we really have to do is crack open a, a you know, sophomore year of high school history book and, you know, we'll, we'll find the answers right there. Yeah. So not being able to buy or sell. Um, another, you know, artifact of our Christianity is we're taught that everything in the book of Revelation is global scale. And, you know, it's, you know, just 100 percent fire and brimstone and doom and destruction on every corner for three and a half years. But, you know, if we actually get into the Greek a little bit, we'll see that, you know, whenever it uses the word world, well, the word that's translated into world can mean anything from the universe all the way down to a neighborhood. <laughs> so it could be a city, it could be a region, it could be a continent. And there's oftentimes enough context that you can, you know, look at and kind of ascertain about what it's talking about. But, you know, there are other times that, well, a third of the men died. So two billion people are going to fall over dead. Whoa! And that's not to say that that isn't going to happen. It's just not to say that that is the only possible interpretation. And probably that's not the right one. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot to be said to understanding context and understanding the timing of the book uh, when it was written, those sorts of things. Because, because you know, as we look at the mark of the beast, it's real easy to read Revelation in English and and say if you have six 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 on your hand, then you are you are marked and it's over with. And you know what? If if you're if you're putting six 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 on your hand, I wouldn't recommend doing that just because I think that's maybe a little bit <laughs> off color. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but uh, at the same time, I, I hope I hope that we've shown you it's not that. Um, well, there is actually some, you know, physical manifestation of the mark. We've seen on Ash Wednesday, people mark their foreheads with the cross, yes, which is a symbol of the Trinity in the Catholic Church. Um, we've also seen, and if you, you know, lived anywhere around me, you'd see this a hundred times a day. Uh, every time somebody walks by the Catholic Church, guess what they do? They put their hand on their forehead, bring it down their, to their chest, and then left to right. So they're literally taking their right hand to their forehead and marking themselves with the Trinity. When, you know, one of their babies are born, they take them to the church and, you know, where do they sprinkle them? Right on the head. And they baptize them into the Trinity, hmm. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there is actually significant precedent to the mark. Um, anytime a Christian church baptizes into the Trinity, 
Father, Son, Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, you know, that is actually an application of the mark of the beast. Hmm. And, you know, having said that, there's something that I want to make a point that's very, very, very clear. Um, we've been taught this doctrine that once you receive the mark of the beast, it's over, all hope is lost, you are damned, damned, damned. But guess what? That is absolutely not scriptural. You don't want to be caught dead with the mark of the beast. <laughs> but while you're still alive, you, you have to understand his grace is sufficient. And the reason you're still alive is because there is still enough time to come to repentance and wash that mark off of you and have his mark applied. And I, I promise you, his mark is, is a lot more permanent. That, that's, that's a permanent marker kind of thing. The mark of the beast, you know, that's, that's you know, watercolor at best. <laughs> so, you know, don't sit there and panic and say, oh, man, I got baptized, you know, when I was 15 in the, you know, the Baptist church. And, you know, oh, no, it's the mark. Yeah, okay, it is the mark of the beast. But, you know, that's really not much graver than having eaten a ham sandwich. Get over it you know, get back on the right path and you're all right. Mm. Um, I wouldn't be going back to that church and, you know, calling on the name of Lord and, uh, you know, doing, you know, passing by Catholic churches and doing this on your body anymore. But, <laughs> you know, all is not lost is the point. So, you know, don't go and proceed to jump out the nearest window. It's not going to, you know, do any good. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a very, very good point. You know, well, well, we've got, you know, again, if you want to go, uh, go to vanityandlies.com. It's Paul's website. You can go read a lot of different articles. He has posted up there about various different topics. This is one of them. Just look for the big giant 666 Trinity image uh, if you can't read, and you'll be able to find the article there. But I don't know how you'll read it if you can't read. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, and, and he's also got his site, uh, a lot of it translated in Spanish, right? Or some of it translated in Spanish? Yes. Um, my, my wife lags a little bit behind me. It takes me about an hour to write an article. It takes her about three days to translate one. So, uh, there's probably about half as many, uh, studies on the Spanish site. But, uh, if you happen to speak Spanish or know somebody who speaks only Spanish, VanidadiMentiras.com is the sister site. And, of course, there's a prominent link to that on the top of the Vanity and Lies page and vice versa. So it's not hard to get into if you're really bored and looking for a cure for insomnia. <laughs> there you go. Well, Paul, is there I, – I didn't – I don't have your article pulled up. Did we get to the end of, of the uh... – of that article, I mean, did we did we cover? I think we covered the basis. Uh, I'm I'm sure I probably have a detail or two in there that we might not have touched. But uh, is it anything that's really going to you know affect uh, what we've covered? Uh, I think we probably did a better job of discussing it than I ever dreamed of writing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's an important topic. It's something that I think is interesting. You know, one thing that I do just want to point out, just kind of bell and whistle here. Uh, you know, it talks about in Revelation that. That this uh, that this entity is is clothed in scarlet, and uh, you've got some images on there of of the entity clothed in scarlet um, and red with a gold chalice in its hand. And yeah, yeah. So we we've got see that picture. Yeah, so you you've got some of that on Vanity and Lies. So you guys can go read that article, read some of his other stuff. Um, but yeah, we uh, you know this this was a, I think it was a fun time. You know, it's fun doing the video thing. It's exciting getting to look at Paul when I talk to him. You know, so. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the, the mark of the beast, um, you don't, you don't have to believe the conspiracies that are being shared and taught on a daily basis out there in the internet world. Um, you can read your, you can read your Bibles, you can read your Bibles, you can, you can find the information that Paul wrote in his article and what we discussed today here on the show in your Bibles. It's not, we didn't make this up. We, we didn't, in fact, we, Paul and I haven't sat here uh, and scripted or we didn't write out a course or anything like that. We didn't talk about this. All I told him was, well, we're going to talk about your article, The Mark of the Beast. And, uh, and that's what we talked about today. So, so it's, I mean, Paul didn't make this up. Okay. Yeah. He wrote it. It's on his website, but, but this is something that's in your Bible. And it's important to remember that because uh, that's, you know, I, I've, I've said this before, but, you know, one thing my mom always told me when I, when I was growing up is you got to know what the Bible actually says, because in the last days, people are going to change 
what the Bible says or tell you it says something different. So if you don't know what it actually says, you're going to be deceived. You're going to be led astray. And uh, that's one of the most There's valuable times that men will no longer endure sound doctrine. Exactly. And we don't. Now we want sound bites. We want to take something out of context create a bunch of disharmony throughout the entire scripture and, you know, go with that instead. But, you know, that's something that I think we both really work to do is find understanding and interpretation that brings the front of the book into agreement with the back of the book. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we've been we've been going here for coming up on an hour and a half, and I'm, I'm watching our viewer number start to drop slowly. So, uh, <laughs> I know some of you probably could stay here all day with us, uh, but just for the sake of not boring people or are really, I don't think it's boring. I think the problem is we have been raised with this mentality that we don't have to look at anything for longer than two seconds. So, uh, so I think for, for that sake, we can go ahead and, and, you know, maybe move on with our days, but we thank you for, for watching and we hope to do more of this type of stuff. Uh, that's something Paul kind of got me inspired to to look into this as we've been having issues with the the radio stream, possibly doing more stuff like this. And it's it's a lot of fun. You guys get to see me, uh, which I know is a blessing to everyone watching. You get to look at me, right? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and Paul as well. Uh, so no, uh, but we we really and appreciate. Is now you. a good time to point out the crumbs in your beard? <laughs> yes, yes. I hope I don't have any. <laughs> Paul got to see earlier as we were testing that this this magical bowl of oatmeal came out of the top of the screen and I was able to eat oatmeal without even having to get up. So uh, it was pretty awesome. I don't awesome. feel bad. I have a floating glass of water. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so anyways, well, thanks thanks so much for, for joining us and watching and um, be sure to check back. We'll, we'll be posting updates and this, this video will be uh, on the YouTube page. It'll be shareable on all your social media outlets. And uh, the audio will actually be part of the podcast as well. So, so we'll have the audio podcast. You'll be updated with that. And then you can watch the video, share it with your friends, and uh, stay tuned for the next uh, live broadcast that we decide to do. And I don't have a time for that one yet, but, but we'll set it up and we'll see. And Paul, if he's, if he's game, I enjoy talking to him. So we'll see if he's Mitch, willing. Mitch, to- it's, it's been an honor. And uh, yeah, if there's anything I can uh, ever do in the future... Uh, as long as I don't have to keep paying you the uh, $50 every time, I'm, I'd be happy to. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll cut you a break next time. Maybe I'll cut you a break. I, the, the $50 was a test run. You know, I got to save my, I've got to save my back. So, oh uh, man. Yeah. So anyways, well, Hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks Paul all the way from uh, uh, central South America. And uh, I, I was going to give your address and, and phone number and all that, but, but I, I, I'll, I'll save that for a later time. So anyways, I thanks think for, the CIA already knows where I'm at. They, <laughs> they keep a pretty close count on me. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks guys. And uh, until next time, we will we will say shalom this morning. So have a wonderful day. Cheers, guys.